Here at ASH 2013, happy to have with us in New Orleans, uh, Denisa Wagner, PhD. She is a scientist in the program in cellular and molecular medicine at Boston Children's Hospital and a professor in the Department of Pediatrics at Harvard Medical School. Thanks for being with us. Thank busy, you. Busy conference for you. Yes, it is always. Okay, so you just came from a Meet the Scientist session and now we are having one. Um, what are those sessions like for people that haven't been to one? I think it's actually nice. If you have somebody whose work you're reading, but you're still maybe too junior that you would like to meet them in the hallway, this is an opportunity to meet a more senior person, more established in the field, especially if you were to try to break into the field or have questions particular to the field or just uh, are interested uh, in the lifespan of that person and want to ask them something about it. So it is pleasant. I had uh, many women that were in my session that uh, had questions uh, also on the private side, how to handle life and how to handle work, etc. So it was an, it was interesting luncheon. What's the best piece of advice you gave? Think of yourself. <laughs> A little bit. Uh, be independent and uh, don't try to be always helpful to everybody else. Um, put your goals first. Very good. Uh, so you're studying inflammation with cancer. Tell me, tell me why this area and, and what you're doing. Okay. So we are interested in a new aspect of inflammation and together with thrombosis. And that is that the neutrophils have been shown a few years ago, about eight years ago in Germany by Arturo Zichlinski, to be able to release in an activated way the contents of their nuclei, the entire chromatin, with also with enzymes that are in the cytotoxic granules of neutrophils, and they form a spider web with it. And it was demonstrated that with that they can attract and bind microbes and then other phagocytes can come in and uh, eliminate the, the microbes. When we saw that, we were thinking perhaps platelets can also bind to it and if this happens in the bloodstream, we could develop pathological thrombosis. And uh, we know, we have demonstrated that, that indeed these nets, when they are released by the neutrophils, they are extremely prothrombotic. And we were thinking cancer is often associated with thrombosis. And 20% uh, of cancer patients actually die of a thrombotic event. Could it be that having cancer could induce the neutrophils to go through it much more easily and release the nuclear DNA much more readily. And we were able to show that and we published a PNAS paper uh, last year on this topic and we have found that cancers, many cancers in the mouse system stimulate netosis and uh, that's the process of releasing the DNA. And after this happens, we can read the biomarkers of nets in the mouse's blood. And recently we have also looked at cancer patients and we could find the same biomarker in their blood. And it correlated with times when they had thrombotic microangiopathies, which is a condition where they develop small thrombi all throughout the bodies. So we think that was interesting. So what do you do next? What do you have plans for next? So another thing that we now know that the cancer induces the nets and they form also within the cancer itself. Now you can think of it as this nasty meshwork that is produced that has lots of enzyme on it and it's fairly toxic because histones that are part of this meshwork, they are under chromatin obviously, they are highly toxic. So it could have an effect on the cancer and it could have an effect on the immune cells that are trying to protect the human body from the cancer. So next we will be investigating how the presence of all this meshwork of these nets that is clearly forming in cancer affects cancer growth and cancer progression. Okay, anything else you want to add? 
No, I think that's fine. Very good. Okay. Thanks for thanks for stopping by and nice giving us a chance by. to to Bye. meet the scientist. Okay, take care.